Michael, this is not the time or place for a business meeting. This is urgent to you. You know, I have to get home to my son. He does not have a mother. Yeah, well, Bo is not responsible for that. Were you even listening in that courtroom? Did you hear the pain in his voice? If I were on trial, I could, I could sound innocent, too. He probably even took some lessons from his actors. You're infuriating. Tina, they have evidence. I am not making anything up. Look, let's just drop that, okay? I have a special favor I, I need you to do for me. Well, this is a hell of a time to be asking me for a favor. It is for me and Alicia, and it concerns the project in Milan, a project which you have put a lot of time in on. Well, what about it? I need you to fly to Milan tomorrow. Given the time, I'm inclined to recess until tomorrow morning if there are no objections from either counsel. Mr. Callison? Oh, it's fine with us, Your Honor. Mr. Russell? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we're in agreement. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I thank you for your time and attention. We will see you all here tomorrow sharply at 9 a.m. Court is adjourned until tomorrow at 9. All rise! Oh, you seem mighty convincing if you understand. You really think so? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Enough to instill reasonable doubt in the jury's mind? Well, surely in the minds of some of them, and that's the start. Exactly. I think you've got them wondering now. Blanche, you don't agree, do you? Well, there's uh, always a chance, yes. Just be honest with me. You're the most experienced trial attorney here. Just give it to me straight. What's the jury thinking? Honestly? Yes. They think you're guilty. Sir, I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm getting your drift here. What exactly are you saying? I don't know exactly. I was, I was just thinking out loud. What? What I really wanted to know is I mean, what your feelings about Bo are. What I mean is, are you saying that you're starting to think that Bo is guilty of killing that lady? Austin, listen, this conversation can never leave this table. If Asa knew that I was doubting Bo's innocence, he would... No, Sarah, Asa will never even know that it happened. You have to trust one thing. Everything you say to me, everything you feel, I keep right here. Now, you know I think the world of you, don't you? Yes, I do. That's one reason I came, because I know you care about me. And I care about you, too. You know, I, um, I used to think that I was in love with Bo. But now I'm not sure with all the witnesses and certain things that I have felt inside from Bo, I... The answer to your question is yes, Austin. I think Bo is the kind of man who's capable of cold-blooded murder. Notice, a member of my family is on trial for murder. I can't very well just up and leave the country. Tina, I need you to deliver something for me. It's very important. I'm, I'm not a messenger. No, listen to me. I need you to take $50,000 in cash for Roberto Tizio in the Milan Ministry Office. Otherwise, he's going to close down the Milano Grand. Why? He's a corrupt official, and he wants a handout. Otherwise, he's going to find a zoning regulation that we have violated. And you're just going to give in to this kind of blackmail? Do you know, I have no choice. I, I, I can't transport blackmail money, and I can't even believe you'd even ask me. Who am I? Am I, I have to turn to somebody. It's got to be you, me, and Gabriel. Well, what's wrong with her? I, I need her for the Landview Grant and to help with Garrick. I, I don't know how to handle him. She does. I, when he cries, I, I want to take him to the hospital right away. I wish I had books she wanted me to read, but I didn't get around to them. And uh, since she read them all, never mind. Never mind. The, the point is that I can't go and either can, can Gabrielle. Well, what about some sort of business assistant or something? No, I can't have just anyone carrying $50,000 in cash. Now, you have a lot invested in this hotel, too. Uh, not money, but, I mean, emotionally and in terms of hard work. If the hotel goes under, so does your showcase. And you know how much it was Alicia's favorite project. Please do it for Alicia's sake, will you? Okay, don't make me feel guilty about her, okay? Hello? Oh, hi, Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Michael. Honey, what are you doing out here? What's going on inside? <clears throat> we're both finished testifying, and Michael and I were discussing business. Uh huh. Has Bo convinced you of his innocence yet, Michael? I'm sorry, Vicky. Excuse me. 
Take it easy, Jack. Hey, Bo, he's supposed to be on our side. It sounds like you're working for the prosecution, Lovelace. Bo asked me for my honest opinion. I guess I'm just not as optimistic as John is. Bo, what are you saying, Blanchard? That the jury's not listening to us? What's going on? A very big difference of opinion, darling. Our attorneys were tired of arguing with her from the police, so they decided to argue with each other. <sighs> Bo, I'm sorry. Blanchard, I apologize for losing my temper. It's not right. Oh, I could have been kinder in answering, Bo, but I've always believed in giving my clients a worst-case scenario. But words don't really matter much right now, do they? I think you're right. I think you guys have done a great job, but we just can't refute the uh, prosecution's evidence. So they could say, yeah, this guy, he's a nice guy, but he's still guilty. Oh, I think you're wrong. I was watching that jury like a hawk. They supported you. Some of them were really affected by you. Folks, I'm going to have to break this up, Mr. Buchanan. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Come, and I'll see you tomorrow. And could you tell Sarah that I love her? Sure will. Bo, you take it easy. Keep the faith, huh? Bye, hon. Herb. Herb, can I uh, speak to you for a moment? Give me another minute here, Renee. Good night, Vicky. Good night, John. Good night, Clint. What was John so upset about? Oh, Lovelace told uh, told Bo that he thought the jury would find him guilty. John wanted to take his head off. Frankly, so did I, but we got past that. Anyway, honey, how's things at the banner? Oh, everything's fine. It's under control. Where is Asa? Uh, he had an appointment at the bank that he couldn't get out of. And speaking of money, Strange thing happened today. Austin wanted to borrow thirty thousand from me. What? Why would Austin want thirty thousand dollars? He said that his father needed an operation, and that Pike was too proud to ask Asa. So he told Austin to ask you? No, no. Austin took that upon himself. Except I just don't know, honey. I. Maybe it's just because I still don't trust the fella. But it doesn't ring right. I, I'm bothered by it. I just don't feel he's telling me the truth. Well, I can see why. All right, I'll take care of this. All see right. you tomorrow. I need it tonight. All right. All right. Herb, how much longer are you going to let this go on? I'm not sure I understand. You're not actually going to convict a man. Let that jury convict a man that we both know is innocent. All right, all right, I know. You think I'm losing my mind coming over here demanding that we stop these proceedings. But uh, we're at our wit's end. I don't know what else to do, and I suspect our attorneys don't either. I have to act on the evidence. I can't ignore it. Evidence? Darling, what you need is a motive, a real and motive. They, listen to me. If this were some other trial, if Bo were someone else, if he was a friend of mine that you didn't know, wouldn't you think me unfit if I didn't press charges? Oh, I see. You're just doing your job. Well, I am the district attorney. Okay, Herb. Okay. I'm scared, and I'm angry, and I'm not ready right now to give you the benefit of the doubt. But I, it's so obvious to me that that man is being railroaded. But, of course, I see what you're saying. If you think that, you have to ignore the evidence. Well, God help the judicial system in this country if Bo Buchanan is convicted. And God help you. Honesty, but no compassion. What was that all about? Oh, I just wasted my breath, Clint. I don't know. I, I have to think about this, and I have to talk to my husband. And Tina, he will never let you do this. And, and promise me you won't tell anyone, including Gord, what the real reason is that you're going to Milan. Oh, great. Now you want me to lie as well as take bribe money. You know, who else am I supposed to turn to? I'm, I have lost my wife. Am I supposed to lose her dream also? Oh, all right, all right. I will just... I'll do it. I'll just right, take a quick wonderful. trip and get it all done with. Well, you like it telling on this, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Michael, you don't have to show that much gratitude for just such a little bit of advice. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think you should be uh, very grateful for anything you might give him. My sentiments exactly, Clint. Tina, the uh, packets we're talking about will be delivered by Gabriel first thing in the morning, and then uh, uh, we'll uh, move on it tomorrow, all right? Thanks. Uh, good night, everybody. Michael? How's your little boy? Uh, fine. He's wonderful. You should, uh, you should come and visit sometime. Oh, that's just great. 
my wife and my sister-in-law. One giving free advice and the other one asking about his family. Darling, what we do now is not going to change anything for both. Even so. Look, uh, could we just go home? It's been sort of a, a long, hard day. Tina, I suppose you need a ride home. Yeah, especially since Corey oh. deserted us to take Audrey back to the hospital. Audrey? Audrey came here in her wheelchair to plead with the judge and the jury to free Bo. Cord felt sorry for her and offered to help. Sarah, do you think being a killer is the worst possible thing a person could be? Yes, of course. And what are you doing sitting here, spilling your guts to me? I spent a lot of time in the penitentiary for murder, remember? Yes, of course I remember. But Austin, you, you were young and wild. You, you just, you got in a fight and you lost your temper. That, that's all. You paid for your crime. And it's very obvious to me that now the, the gentler side of your personality is in control. But with Bo, it's different. Because it was so thought out, you mean? You see, he must have really put a lot into rigging that car in order for the brakes to fail. That takes a lot of hate, a lot of planning. I know. I used to think, when I broke up with Bo, what would what, he do? It scared me to death. I mean, I could certainly hurt him a lot more than Michael Grant. What if he wanted revenge for that? Were you thinking about breaking up with Bo? I mean, before the murder charges? Yes. I mean, I tried to love him, you know? He's so cute and... He's charming. And rich. Yeah, he's rich. I'll admit it. But once we started living together, I just realized that we weren't meant to be together. He's really not even my type. Well, so why'd you move in with him so quickly? Well, you know, my room at the Waterside Inn flooded, so I just moved in. I stayed. I tried to make it work. I really did try. I mean, I wanted Bo to be the love of my life. But he just wasn't. And now I'm thinking that I might be living with a cold-blooded murderer. On the other hand, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. God knows his friends and family don't think he could do it. I think he could. I think any man is capable of killing under the right circumstances. Circumstances are not always the same for everyone, but it is definitely possible. Austin, I just had an idea. Could you come to court tomorrow? Just listen and observe. Just, you know, tell me what you think, Austin. I, I was thinking maybe you could come to it as my friend. It'd be a real pleasure, Sarah. But I'm just real afraid of getting one of my spells. How have your eyes been lately? Well, uh... They've been okay, actually. Now that I think about it, the, the blindness spells just aren't as frequent. That's great. Well, listen, I, I probably should be heading home. Well, why don't I just come with you? I think we could spend the evening together and just talk. Well, that's okay. Um, Megan's coming over for dinner, and I think my dad's probably going to stop by, too. So. Anyway, I'll see you at the courtroom tomorrow, right? Nine o'clock. I'll be there. Now, you listen to me. If you need anything, day or night, why, you just give me a call, you hear? Yeah. Thank you, Austin, for everything. Mm. It was a very good idea you're deciding to use that entrance. Less chance of being shot. Well, I thought everyone would be at court. They are. Cords around somewhere, but it doesn't matter. I'm here, and I am plenty mad at you. I can't believe the way you lied. Changing the testimony you gave to the police, saying, saying you clearly saw Bo in that garage. I did what was expected of me by the man in my life. You know something about going overboard for men, don't you, Tina? So let's drop it and get back to business, shall we? We don't have any business. I can't do it. 
<laughs> Don't be silly. Of course you can. I brought you $500, $100 bills. There's a flight leaving this afternoon at 3 to Milan, or 9 tonight, or 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Which one would you like me to book you on? None. I'm not going. It is stupid and illegal. And not only would it get me in trouble with my husband, the rest of my family, but the entire Italian government. And besides, I don't understand why you can't just go do it. Because I have to take care of the hotel here. Not to mention a very precious little baby at home. He is such a treasure. I really have fallen in love with him. So has Michael. I also realized how much I missed when I gave Al up to you when he was an infant. So, I see you've really moved in. For the moment, while there's an emergency, yes. For the moment, yeah. We both know it would take several sticks of dynamite to get you out of Michael's house. <sighs> Look, in the meantime, transporting this money is wrong, and I'm not going to do it. Oh, by the way, before I forget, there's another reason you have to go. Michael would like you to arrange for the name of the hotel to be changed. Changed? What's he talking about? Does he know how much this is going to cost? Yes, he does, and he doesn't care. Tina, he wants the name to be... The Milano Alicia Grand. But, of course, if you don't take this 50 grand, then it doesn't matter what name the hotel is, it'll be doomed. All right. All right, I will do it for Alicia. Good. But I cannot leave this country until this trial is over, and I think that may be today. Well, you get to see... All right, Gabrielle, what the hell are you doing here? Don't get your feathers all ruffled. I'm on my way out. Yeah? Well, stay out, too. Do me a favor, huh? What is going on? What is she doing here? What's this? Uh, honey, honey, you see, the problem is that... What? Honey, there's got to be thousands of dollars in here. And what is going on? Girl, what have you gotten yourself into now? Morning, Asa. Renee. Morning. As it is. I don't know about you, but I was up about 20 times last night, pacing, worrying. Oh, you should have called your pa. You could have paced and worried on the phone together. Hmm. We need a miracle, don't we, Claire? I'm afraid so, Pa. Morning, everyone. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Hi, sweetheart. How are you holding up? Hmm? Pretty good. One minute. Pretty awful the next. Sarah, we were just saying how confident we are in the jury in uh, vindicating Paul. Really? Did something happen? No, you didn't see him on the stand yesterday. I know. I'm sorry about that, Clint. It just couldn't be helped. Well, he came off very sympathetically and very honest. and gave all of us a lot of hope. Wow. That's great. Uh, Renee, could I uh, speak to you alone for a minute? Of course, darling. Why don't we uh, see if those lawyers have anything new to say this morning? I am running so late. It seemed like I couldn't fall asleep until it was time to get up this I am morning. so glad you're here. I have been so but worried Renee, about you. Renee, you don't understand. I shouldn't even be here. I tried to call you this morning, but you'd already left, so I had to come here to talk to you. Sarah, what in heaven's name is going on? When Austin arrives, please, please make sure that he stays put, all right? Austin's coming here. Yes, I, I can't explain it all to you now, but while he's here, I want to go search his room and the garage. Search them? What, what for? For the original master brake cylinder to Michael Grant's car. Darling, are you thinking that Or Austin... anything else that might link him to the murder, all right? But why do you think no, it's I Austin? can't explain it all to you right now. If he sees me here, the whole thing's going to be... Just tell him that I had to run no, out. No, darling, I want to explain this theory. No, Nathan, wait, no, please. I am swearing you to secrecy. Don't tell anyone about this or they'll just mess the whole thing up. Right? Uh, Sarah, no, I don't... Hey, we better put him on my seat. Uh, darling, I, I'm talking to Sarah. No, that, just... that is okay. I, uh, I just have to step out for a minute. I'll be back as soon as I can. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. I left the, an important document at home. I, I have to go pick it up and then take it over to the Center for the Blind. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you back here as soon as whoa, I can. Whoa, whoa. Right? I'll drive you over there. No, no, no. That's okay. I want you to get in there so you can tell me what, what you think. What, what you think about everything, all right? I'll, I'll be back as soon as I can. I should be here, Uncle, just for you and Renee, in case some bad news came down today. We appreciate that. Got to admit that things aren't going too good for Bo. Is there anything wrong, Renee? No. No. No, I'm just hoping that Sarah gets here soon. 
She had a present for Bo. She wanted to cheer him up, and she had to go home and get it. Does defense counsel wish to call any more witnesses to the stand on behalf of Mr. Buchanan? Uh, no, Your Honor. Defense rests. Some defense. They figured there was no point in calling Sarah to the stand. And then, Mr. Callison, are the people prepared to make their closing arguments? Yes. Yes, we are, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a difficult task before you. You will be required to set aside your own personal feelings, your assumptions about the defendant, and deal strictly with the evidence that was and was not presented to you. And Bob Buchanan has been well thought of in this community for many years as a businessman, a family member, a, a citizen. He's known as a nice guy. When he was up there on the stand testifying, I'm quite sure you felt some of that likability and wondered how this man could commit such a terrible act as premeditated murder. And why? Now, Mr. Russell has portrayed him as a man who had no reason to do such a thing. I'm very aware that you must be wondering among yourselves, what motive could Bo Buchanan possibly have that he would risk everything in a very good life to wreak revenge on Michael Grant? Well, Mr. Russell brought up something else as well. He brought up a tragedy in Bo Buchanan's life. A tragedy in which he himself was deeply hurt by a man who was seeking revenge on the Buchanans. His name was Patrick London. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this man actually took Mr. Buchanan and his wife prisoner. He locked them in a dungeon. He held them there for months while he sought his revenge. Before it was over, Bo Buchanan's wife was dead. And he was left a bitter, emotionally ravaged human being. I know this for a fact. I submit to you that he learned a lesson from that experience, a very big lesson. He learned that never again would he turn the other cheek. He learned that never again would he be the nice guy. Confronted with an enemy, Bo Buchanan learned to strike first. Austin, darling, where are you going in such a hurry? I'm going home, Renee. Oh, well, uh, Sarah expected you to be here when she came back. Oh, yeah? She told you that? No, uh, she just mentioned that you two had talked and that you were going to be here and that she was glad. Well, I can't stay, Renee. It reminds me too much of my own trial and all the years I spent in jail. And now I know what Cousin Bo is going to have to face. Yeah, well, it's not going very well, that's for sure. But we're hoping that John Russell's going to be able to save the situation. And you know, Austin, uh, Asa would appreciate it so much if you were here. I mean, if the bad news gets any worse. Sorry, Renee, I just can't, all right? It's just a little too hard on me. I want to go home and, and, and do some work and try to be productive. So if you see where uh, Sarah, just tell her I'm sorry, but I couldn't stay any longer. Sarah, please be there. Oh, Lordy. All right, I'll call you in a couple of minutes. What is this for? Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. Let me take a wild guess here, honey. Maybe it's for a bribe. Why would Michael send all this cash to somebody, huh? Why not just write a check? I'm telling you, girl, Michael Grant and Gabrielle want you to bribe a city official. Well, I, I hear that sort of thing goes on a lot over there. So it's done. So That doesn't make it right, honey. That doesn't make it legal. Or I, I don't know what astounds me more about this, the, the fact that Michael Grant would have the gall to do something like this, or the fact that you would accept his offer. Honey, I tried to say no, I did, but then he persuaded me to do it, and then she came over here, and I tried to say no to her, too, but I just didn't know what to do. I... You what? Honey? You, you were thinking about all the lampshades that you had picked out, all the wallpaper? Lord, I know that your career is important to you, girl, but I, I, I just can't believe this. Well, honey, of course it's important to me, and besides, what's so wrong with that? 
You'd want your name on all your photos, right? Yes, honey, I would. But it's different wanting to be successful, all right, but not wanting to sacrifice all your principles. This doesn't have anything to do with principles. Besides, the only guy that doesn't have any is that government official over there. I, I can't even talk to you about this now. I'm late as it is. All right, look, uh, I got to get going, but when I get back, I will take that money over to Michael Grant's with you, and I will personally shove it down his throat. No, he won't. I'll, I'll do it. Are you sure you can tell him no? I mean, he, he's not going to persuade you to do this? Because, Lord help me, honey, if I come home and I find out that you are on the noon plane to Milan... That won't happen. All right. Well, as I said, I'm late. Audrey expecting you? No, honey, I've got an assignment at the banner. I told you that earlier. I forgot. Are you going to the courthouse today? Go to the courthouse. Do I return this? So, yes, you're daddy's little boy. <laughs> Is that a smile I see? Come on. I think I see a smile there. Nobody else says babies your oh, age are uh, able to smile, but I don't think so. I think I actually see a little uh, smile, huh? Right? <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, my list is here. Oh, I bet you it's time to get fed. Right? Yeah. Yes. Sir. <sighs> Hello, you three. How's it going? Quite well so far, Miss Medina. Yes, Riggy's about to have his uh, second breakfast of the day. Oh, or is it his third? <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, well, see you in a bit. Bye-bye. <sighs> I think Melissa's working out just fine, isn't she? Well, as long as you're here, yes. She's a little young, though, so I'm not sure if I can trust her. Michael, firstly, she won't be alone. I will be here with her. Secondly, she's got six brothers and sisters. I think she knows exactly what she's doing. All right, all right. Uh, what about Tina? Did everything go all right this morning? Well, with Tina, nothing is ever easy. I got there and she had changed her mind about taking the money over to Milano, so I had to change it back again. <sighs> Michael, please, don't worry. She will do it eventually. We just have to put up with her nonsense until she does. All right. You know, I was, I was watching Garrick this morning, and uh, he already looks like Alicia. Really? And all the while, I thought he looked like you. No, no, he's got her eyes. Well, you know, babies at this age, they change a great deal. I'd be interested to see if you feel the same way in about a month. Oh. But no matter what he looks like, he's a very sweet baby. God, he certainly is. <laughs> he's got her temperament. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm actually laughing a little. There's a good reason for that. That little boy has brought nothing but love into this house. He has. And uh, so have you. I want to thank you for uh, being so uh, supportive. The hatred of Bo Buchanan for Michael Grant. The fingerprints on the punctured master cylinder. The witnessing of Bo Buchanan in the garage where Michael Grant's car was parked. When you add it up, you cannot possibly come to any conclusion other than a premeditated attempt on Michael Grant's life, which backfired and killed his wife instead. And when you reach that conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you will surely concur that Bo Buchanan is guilty of murder in the first degree. Thank you. Might as well put in my change of address for Statesville. Yeah, give me a chance to undo all that, will you? Mr. Russell, are you ready to sum up for the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Well, according to Herb Callison, you people have nothing to think about. You can just waltz into that room, sit down, vote guilty, and be on your way to lunch. And you could do that. You could if you were uncaring, irresponsible, insensitive people. And I don't think you are. I think you're the type of people that want to give a man a fair shake. So let me explain to you about a basic tenet of American law. Innocent 
until proven guilty. What that means is that you have to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt, based only upon evidence presented in this courtroom, that Bo Buchanan attempted to murder Michael Grand, thereby accidentally killing Alicia Grand. Innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is very important. It means that it's not up to me to prove his innocence. It is up to the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he is indeed guilty. Have they done that? Have they convinced you that this man here, with everything going for him, would give it all up, risk it all, just because of a silly feud with another man? I mean, we're not talking about a guy that's down on his luck with little or nothing to live for. We're talking about a man that is in love with a very beautiful lady who's planning a new future together. We're talking about a man who is a co-owner and producer of a hit TV series. We're talking about a well-respected businessman, a nice guy, a nice guy who's been set up. I totally wrong about Austin? Have I turned him into a killer in my mind, in my desperation to save Bo? God, I was sure I'd find something. If, if not the original master brake cylinder, then something. Sarah. Well, I know that it's hard to theorize about being framed. It all sounds, well, slightly preposterous. But in this case, ladies and gentlemen, it happens to be true. Because someone went to a great deal of trouble to set up Bo Buchanan. We don't know how his fingerprints got on that master cylinder. The real killer does. We just know that he put them there somehow. Not like the prosecution says. This is, however, the prosecution's only evidence. I mean, the fact that Gabrielle Medina, who is Michael Grand's, uh, shall we say, best friend, thought that maybe she saw Bo in the garage and maybe she didn't. Well, that is not evidence. And people in business feud all the time. The fact that Bo Buchanan and Michael Grand were feuding, that isn't evidence. So you gotta ask yourselves, are, are, are you ready to wipe out all of your doubt all of your concerns about this man being a killer based on that one piece of flimsy evidence? I hope not. And I think that once you sit down and you go over the facts of what's gone on here, you'll find that there's way too much room for doubt and that you must, by law, find Bo Buchanan innocent, as he in fact is. Thank you. God bless you in your decision. We will recess for five minutes before I instruct the jury. All rise. <clears throat> Darling, I'm going out to the corridor. Why? I have to use the phone. I'll be right back. Sarah was here, and then she left? Yeah, I have no idea why, but I'm sure she'll be back as soon as she can. Pa, what do you think? hard, Bo. I keep thinking with my heart. Well, I think we all do, but I also think that John scored some very good points. Now, the jury has to have some doubt in their minds. And as long as there's doubt, they can't convict you. Yeah, and I can't believe that motive that Herb came up with. Well, he had to come up with something. Uh, Vicki, could I speak to you privately just for a second? Could you excuse us? Sure, sure, sure I'll wait. I want Sarah to find another man just as soon as possible. What are you saying? Look, she's young. She's got her whole life in front of her. I don't want her pining over some guy that's away in prison. I want her to get over me. I want to do whatever it takes. So just tell her something. Tell her that, yes, in fact, that I just may have killed this woman. Oh, will you stop this? I don't want her sacrificing her life for me. 
Making a trip up to Statesville once a month. We could even hold hands up there. Is that what you want for honey, her for the rest of her life? Honey, this is for Sarah to decide, not you. She's going to turn to you, Vicky. I know that. And you can help point her in another direction. I don't think you know Sarah as well as you think you do. She's very headstrong and very loyal. And Sarah will decide what she does about this, not us. I know I'm supposed to be safely tucked away in the court while you're snooping around for my stuff. But I decided to leave. So you mind explaining to me what's going on here, Sarah? Uh, was, I was looking for some pliers. Oh, I see. Yeah, pliers. You drove all the way from Bo's house to pick up a pair of pliers. What are you trying to tell me? My rich cousin doesn't own a pair of pliers? No, I wasn't saying that. I just was saying... Of course you're not. <laughs> You know, I was just starting to get me a really strange feeling sitting in that court. Oh, Renee was putting out some powerful vibes. Yeah. So I started to think, hey, maybe I'm being set up. Now, I want to bet that that's Renee calling to warn you that I'm on my way over here. Any takers? No. Nope. Hello, Austin Buchanan. Hello. I guess it's your turn to do the talking now, right, Sarah? So come on, what's going on here? What is it, you were lying to me yesterday? I want to know, what is it you're looking for here, Sarah? I've been talking to you and Michael is causing me so much agony. No, I, I can't. I mean, taking this, this money and transporting it, this bribe money, no, I... It's just an awful thing to do. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. So it looks like Cord finally has what he wants. What's that? Oh, a little wife who stays home taking care of his kid while he goes out and works for fame and fortune, and then on his free time, well, he goes and sees a very attractive actress on a TV show. Well, if you are referring to Audrey, she has absolutely nothing to do with this. Really? It is very interesting that he's attracted to a woman who works very hard, or at least used to, now is very needy, and yet won't let you have a career at all. Cord is behind my career. Really? Did you tell him if the hotel goes under, your showcase goes with it? Yes. And he still doesn't think you should do this. Well, Tina, I would say he's not being honest with you. Because if you don't have a showcase, then you don't have a career. And what do you have if you don't have that? OK, Austin. You want to tell me what these are? You want to explain these drops, huh? Oh, no, I've never seen them before. Well, here, maybe you ought to take a closer look. You see, uh, when you walked in, I was reading the ingredients on the label. The chemicals in that bottle could make anyone go blind for, say, an hour or two after application. So I started thinking that maybe Dr. Pomerantz was right when he said you were faking your blindness. Hey, come on, Sarah. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen this bottle before oh, in my life. Oh, come on. Give me credit, all right, for just having a little bit of intelligence. Hey, come on now. What about that letter I gave you from that doctor from down yeah, in right. Texas? I called that doctor. He's never heard of you, much less examined you. OK, so that's what this is all about? Huh? You're looking around for evidence to, to make sure that I'm faking my blindness? Yeah, that's right. What about what you and I talked about yesterday? I leveled with you yesterday, but you didn't. And you still haven't. Okay, Sarah. I'm going to come clean with you. I'm going to come real clean. I'm in love with you. I have been since the first moment I saw you. Now, I knew I had to do something in order to get close to you. Because, heck, as long as I was just the ex-con working on Uncle Ace's place, I knew you and I could never get to know each other. And I knew that Bo, well, he'd make sure that that wouldn't happen. Austin, do you hate Bo? Of course not. He just lucked out, that's all. Being born on his side of the family instead of on mine, you see, he always got everything that he ever wanted. And so I come out here, and I see that he's got something else, and it's something that I want, too. And I figured... After all the years that I spent in prison, well, I deserve something nice and soft and beautiful like you. So I did what I had to do. And it worked, too. I mean, didn't it? You got to know me and fond of me. Unless you were lying to me yesterday. So come on, Sarah. Tell me. Do you want me or not? No! 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 You want to know what's going on?
going on, Renee? What happened to Austin, and why isn't Sarah back? I'm worried about her. I just wanted to reach her. Why are you worried about Sarah? Let's have some order in here now, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are now partners in this trial, co-judges. While it is my job to judge the law, it is your job to judge the facts. This means you must deliberate without passion, without sympathy, without prejudice, because you are the judge of the facts as they have been presented in this courtroom. And your verdict must arise from the evidence or the lack of evidence or the conflict of evidence. And you must apply the concept of a reasonable doubt to that evidence. If in your deliberations you find that there is a reasonable doubt, then you must, by law, bring in a verdict of not guilty. If, on the other hand, you find that after you've weighed the facts, and only the facts, that there is no doubt that the defendant is guilty as charged, then that is the verdict that you must bring in. Now, I will thank you in advance for your time and for your fairness. If the bailiff will take the jury out, we will adjourn until such time as they are ready with a just verdict, and I will remind you that a man's life is in your hands. This way, please.